come with me and hello everyone welcome back i'm here in between a protective style and a hard place after doing the most today <laughs> wow today's topic is going to be about adulting and uh, let's see adulting uh, how, how how do i want to how do i want to talk about this we want to talk about adulting and the idea of being left behind why why dear do we get left behind is my mic on mic check mic check now this actually came up on my for you page um a couple of months ago when i started posting regularly on youtube and one of the issues that was being presented by a young lady um, was that she envisioned herself to have a husband, a career, and a house, and a dog, and all of these accolades and achievements and accomplishments by the time she was 35. And she, as she reflected back on her life, having, I think this was on the cusp of her 30th birthday, having not accomplished any of those things, as a matter of fact, uh, subsequently ending up living at her at her mother's house maybe I'll, li I'll leave a link to the video in my description living at her mom's house not having a job videos like that started popping up on my page I guess algorithm wise it only makes sense that I would start to see more and more content like this and um, and so I became quite interested in the topic of being left behind more so in the context of accountability and responsibility, which is something that we revere and cherish here on this channel, I was most interested in what these people who were talking about being left behind had reflected on what their next move was going to be. And I asked that to my audience, and I bring it up in the context of this video, because we are not only supposed to be reflective on some of the things that we might um, be concerned about in our lives but we should also be able to reach a level of resolve in our lives to either find it okay or to think about what strategies this person you, me as a person are um, taking in our current situation to move forward I was exp I was especially concerned because a lot of the content revolved around feeling okay with not having accomplished some of the things that some of the people set out to accomplish, which I in itself, <clears throat> excuse me, in theory, don't actually have a problem with. I think that it's good to let certain things go. In my own life, I have had to let go of certain ideologies and ways of being that actually did not align with things that I said I wanted. And those things came out of a certain set of reflections that were forced upon me by the circumstances that I ended up in. And it's very interesting because, like I said, I listened to some videos. One young lady stuck out in my mind, particularly because she had the list that I just told you about where she wanted to have a career and a husband and a family and a dog and a house. And having a career is not the same as having a job. And I say that only in the context of being a woman. When you have a career, it is a very, very... Um, it's a very big task, and it's something that you end up having to do in a season of your life and not all of your life especially if you want to be a mother and be the sole caregiver and provider of that of those children um you will end up having to put your career and, or your children aside at some point in your life if you try to do both things simultaneously this is not my opinion this is the common trend of why a lot of women are choosing to not have ch children and subsequently regret not having children regret having children or struggle with their career and juggling having family and children and so it comes as no surprise to me that some people struggle to even get started as to which one comes for first the horse or the carriage the egg or the chicken and that's a question that women generally get weighed and bogged down with and worse so since we are in a day and age where 
women are no longer comfortable talking about these elements of their life um, without feeling ostracized. If they favor the pathway of being a mother and a wife, then they will, I know I was ostracized for choosing family over career because I instinctively knew that having a family was not something that I can always do, but having a career is something that I could always go back and do technically, in a sense, depending on what it is I want to do and how long it takes for me to accomplish those things. And definitely it comes with a set of resolve, like I said before, as to, okay, am I going to have to let certain aspects of my perception of what I, what I believe is success go? Or will I be able to readjust and realign my life to better suit some of the things that are most important and give up things that are not so important for the time being to better accommodate um, to better accommodate the life that I feel at the moment is going to bring me the most joy and accomplishment. Now, I'm not going to say that you're not going to look back sometimes and be like, man, if I had, if I'd gone on that cruise to that guy, if I had that career, I could had the bag or if you know there's always the concept of if and I think that is one of the things that I'm most grateful for having had the experience of spending a lot of time with people who are older like I worked in an old folks home or not worked I volunteered at an old folks home when I was younger it was a part of requirement of graduating from high school and high in Catholic high school y'all so you know don't judge me I didn't do it on purpose I was assigned. I didn't give any trouble. I, it wasn't like a punishment. It was just the way it was back in those days. Um, shout out to all my people from the Caribbean. If y'all know about this, you know, leave a like in the comment section. So anyways, speaking to some of the older people in the old folks home, you get firsthand experience with the level of regret at an end of a person's life. And it is not a pretty sight to see. I started doing, I started doing this exercise in my coaching where I would push people and use this as a example to push people to be more, to be more motivated and driven in accomplishing some of their dreams and goals that they may have a certain level of seed of doubt about being able to accomplish and not feeling, um, uh, resolved enough or convicted enough in achieving those goals. And it's very amazing to me to see how many people struggle with this in their old age or in an age where they're just at the cusp or the turn of handling their lives in a way that they have to acknowledge that they're not who they used to be because they're a little bit older or a lot older. It always brings me back to a client that I had who wanted to have children, but was way past her childbearing age. And not way past. I mean, there are very, very few anecdotal stories of women who have been able to conceive in this age, but it is not the norm. And um, I tend to want to give people the space to live in possibility and not probability. Just because something is probably able to happen does not mean that it's absolutely 100% possible that it can happen. And this is the mistake and the trap that a lot of us fall into is that we think we can have it all, specifically women. We are very irrational and illogical about the standards that we set and we end up doing a throwing out the baby with the bath water move where it's all or nothing and life is not like that it is about compromise and it is about understanding that things are a list of priority and i'm going to talk about this more in uh, my next video when i talk about the soft life soft life and who it's for and who it's not for because i think that a lot of the times what we get caught up in is that we have this yolo concept of living our lives in the moment and not really looking at the bigger picture. I've talked about this at great length in various many different ways because I really believe that this is one of the most fresh pressing issues that's keeping women down depressed and unsuccessful is that we don't have a bigger concept of how our actions now affect our future selves and it is a major part of the whole trend of feeling like we can have it all and you don't have to think about the future and having life without consequences just means that you have the freedom to do whatever you want. But with freedom 
with great freedom comes a lot of great responsibility. You know, we don't have a clear view picture of, or, or a clear overview picture of the level of responsibility that comes along with having not put things in place for our future. And so that's one of the issues. And then the second issue is that a lot of the times the things that we want are not necessarily in alignment with other things that we want. <laughs> and this is what I this is what I heard when I heard the woman talk about how she wanted to have a family and she wanted to have a great career. And a lot of women fall into this trap of wanting to do these things and resent having to give up their career for their family. But a family is something that has um <clears throat> Playing the role of mother in a family is a very important job, and it has a lot of great implications for the type of mothering that your children in, care, um, in your care receive. Because if they feel like they're in competition with your, with your career or with your studying or with those things, they're going to develop complexes and self-esteem issues that that speak negatively to their own development, and so. It's not always about what we want and how we want it all the time. And we can't do our jobs very well if we think that our job is a burden, if that makes sense. So we have to be able to understand that being a mother is not something that everyone will get to do. And it's, a, it's the most important job because while everyone has a mother, and everyone can link the type of person that they are because of the mothering they received or did not receive, not everyone will be able to pass on or to get said opportunity because it is extremely, extremely difficult in, in today's day and age. And I just want to make sure that people understand that I'm not pushing that you have to be a mother. Some of us are better off not being mothers. Um, but all of us got here because of a mom. And if you reflect back on the person that you are and your attitude towards family and motherhood, I would argue that that attitude is as a direct result of what you experienced in your personal life. Everybody can say that. Not everybody can say, I'm a mom and this has been my experience. And so it's a very, very, very precious an important job because you are the first encounter that people interact with that dictates what kind of social order we will have in our future generations. So for people to say that it's not important and it's not, it's not interesting, it's not, I mean, anybody can do it. It's just bonkers and BS. I think that it is very, very important and it's so important that it had to be included in GDP of a lot of the more developing country, developed countries and nations in the world. If you look up your history, you will hear way more about this topic. But let me reel it back in so we drive home the point of feeling left behind. My last concern about the whole idea of being left behind is that... Um, a lot of people are concluding that it's okay. And I know that that is a tempting philosophy to hold on to. And in some cases, it's a good thing, like I said before. Okay, um, I'm letting go of the this or the that or the other. Um, but I really believe that self-reflection is really important in understanding what it is you are okay with. Like me and my husband talk about this a lot. Like, Oh, I am going to try to do this new thing. We were talking about um going to school and school is hard. And it's hard when you have a family. And it's hard when you have a family and a full-time job. And it's hard when you have a family and a full-time job and a wife. And it's hard when you have all of the other things that are trying to grab at your attention in between. So if you really don't have the motivation and it's not interesting to you and you you know in your heart of hearts that you are resolved and okay with and happy with the life that you have or you have come to terms with the fact of what not going back to school implicates for your future um then then it's okay to let it go but 
God. If you are sitting at home or at 30 years old, your parents' house, and you thinking that maybe this is going to be my life. I'm just going to let mom take care of me until she dies, and then I'll just figure it out after that. That's something different. That is not accepting that you can't. That is saying that you won't. And this is the part of adulting that is extremely important for us to, re to define. And I can't believe that we are now at a stage and age in our society where people have to understand and define adulting. You got to learn how to drive. I don't drive. I hate driving. I know I'm one of those people who would probably, if not pushed, ask people to shuttle them around. Shout out to all my friends who have been shuttling me around. I really appreciate you guys. Love you guys. I'm getting my license next year. But that's, an, that's the thing, that getting a job. Um, working, earning your money, taking care of your household, getting your life in order. These are the things that adults do. All right. This is not up for discussion, so to speak. This is a part of being a productive citizen of a of a community, of a state, of a city, of a country. You work, you pay your taxes if you need to, and you provide service to a company or a boss or your, or your your own employment agency or whatever. You work, you earn money, you pay your taxes, you send your kids to school, and you contribute to society and take care of yourself. You are not supposed to just live off of the state or live off other people. And this is what I talk about when I talk about the bigger picture, because if you're, if you're, this is going to be a another three part series because I don't think I could cover all of the elements and intricacies of adulting in this one video because because there it, you know it's very circumstantial and it may vary in different countries politically and some people have different meanings and understandings of what they think adulting is and how far adulting should go but we can all agree that we have opportunities to available to us that involve our um, our contribution and our ability to take care of ourselves. That is our responsibility. Anything outside of that is extra, and people should be motivated to do the most. But I don't believe that this is something that should be up for discussion as to what would be considered the bare minimum, in my opinion for every adult to be able to do. Now, some of us would like to go off to college because we feel and understand that that means that we will, we will be able to afford a certain kind of lifestyle. It also means that in some countries and situations, we're gonna have to consider what are the costs and benefit effects of um, going into student debt in order to receive said education, which will then have afford us a job that will then be able to pay off our debt and then um, provide more money so that we can be able to live a certain lifestyle. This is why I'm going to stop now because <laughs> this is a big topic and I just want especially the women to think about what those implications are for you because we tend to feel like we are equal to men in this aspect and retrospect and we absolutely are not. To all my young ladies out there who are in the, between the ages of 18 and 25, let me be generous, 28. Mm -hmm. who say, well, kids are not on my radar. I don't think I want to have children. I'm child-free. I usually am extremely tickled by this because I don't really believe that a 25-year-old or 28-year-old can really um, speak to the issue of motherhood from a perspective of not having the option of having children. Like, I think, like, if you are young enough where you can choose to be child free it's very different than if you're 30 40 and you have 
either the conviction and know that you don't have that desire or that desire has been taken away from you because of your age. And women tend to feel differently about these topics depending on how old they are. Younger women want to live their lives and enjoy their freedom and their youth. And older women will wake up and be like, there is no freedom in youth to enjoy anymore. Nobody's studying me. Oh, and I have nobody to take care of or love me unconditionally. I'm not saying that's why you should have children, but this is something that really comes into play when you're much older. So when I see women in that age range say, oh, you know, I'm good. I don't want to have kids. Um, then I believe them. But most of the time, those exact same women who are in their 20s and early 30s, as, as late as like 28, you know, 18, 28, who say they don't want to have children are the same ones who later on will say, oh, I made a mistake. I just, you know. So let us continue this conversation in our next video. I hope to see you guys again soon. I like this beige. I know I just seem like a head in the background, but you guys know what to do. It's the holiday season, so please make sure to stay safe and stay free. What are you thankful for?